What's going on? Welcome to Unlocking Your Inner Strength. In these episodes, I share with you insights and inspirations that have come to me on my path in life, and hopefully they can be a welcome hand of guidance as you move along your journey. I teach because I'm passionate about my message. I teach because it helps me to learn more deeply. Thanks for sharing a few minutes of your time with me for this week's episode. And without further ado, here is this week's show. Hey, everybody. Back with another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. Today, uh, actually, the article that kind of corresponds with this will come out on, I believe, tomorrow or Thursday. I have it set to go out. However, I want to um, kind of give you the background on this whole line of thought. So when I was in college, I would present my nutrition professors, my fitness professors, with these theories that I had been developing literally since I was a junior in high school. Right? I was really into this stuff and studying stuff even at that time. And a lot of the stuff I would present to them, they, they couldn't dismiss because it made solid sense, right? And, and I was always applying the stuff to myself. But they didn't really know how to take it any further because they were taught the textbook way, uh, you know, for example, of you want to lose weight, cut calories, burn calories, right? So I'm bringing them ideas like cheat meals, cheat days, super compensation. You know, I didn't know the term for that at that point, but that's what I was trying to get at. So nonetheless, I've been um, for a long time just using what I call reality math. I mean, I look at what's going on, I apply, I test, I observe, I observe in other people, and I said, yeah, I get it that it makes sense on paper, but it doesn't work. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is an article that I wrote uh, way back in 2007 that kind of went... Um, viral at that time before that was even a thing. I mean, Facebook was just starting out and it was posted on a lot of the forums and stuff at that time. And I think Elite FTS, some pretty big sites. But I believe with anything, right, you need to know why you're doing something and and how it's working to some degree because you're going to be able to better understand and, and connect the dots and then you can own it. Right. If you know how it's working and all that, now that's true learning. That's true uh, as far as having the ability to then teach to other people. And when you when you can teach something, you know it. Right. And when you teach something, you also learn it. So I want to talk about the fakest fitness fallacy of all time, in my opinion. And there's plenty of nutrition ones as well. But it's this idea that you have to do slow, long distance cardio to lose fat. Nothing could be further from the truth than that. Now, where did that come from? That kind of started popping up in the, in the 60s, late 60s, 70s and 80s is when it really exploded. When cardio machines and, and whatnot became all the rage. So a large part of this was marketing, marketing driven. And it was easy. It, it disguised a true lack of expertise with, with personal trainers and fitness trainers. Well, you know, I don't really know how to get you to change your body, so let's put you on a treadmill like a human rat for 30 minutes and, and, you know, call it a day. So that whole concept of being in this fat-burning zone and, and, and losing weight is, is so far wrong, it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. And it doesn't mean I, I, I uh, despise all that stuff. There was a time when I did, but it depends on why you're doing it. With cardio, let's define that first. So cardio is anything that works a cardiovascular system, right? And you have something called the fat burning zone where a larger percentage of what you're using as energy is coming from fat, like 60 to 65% uh, of max heart rate. I don't remember because it's so useless. So you gotta be in a fat burning zone, right? And you gotta do this, this slow, long distance cardio that you might not like and it's boring, but you're gonna lose weight. Do that in conjunction with maybe hitting the weights and do it in conjunction with cutting carbohydrates or something like that. So just like muscle is not built in the workout, fat loss does not happen in the workout. And I'm the first one, I always tell people, weight loss, fat loss, 
exercise is directly, so directly related, it's completely useless for, for weight loss and fat loss. And, that, and again, it's all based, people based this in, in the, the simultaneous model of weight loss. Cut calories, burn calories, lose weight, right? We know that does not work. And when I say it does not work, uh, show me somebody that's had lasting results doing that, and uh, I'll give you 100 bucks. So, the aerobic fallacy, right? That was the name, I think, of the original article. Getting back to cardiovascular health. What drives the cardiovascular system? It is the muscular system. The more muscle you work, the more cardiac output and stress you get, right? So the more muscle you work, the more cardiac output you get. And when we look at that, and, and I was thinking of this when I was going for my Sunday morning jog, was based in, okay, if I'm just going at a nice pace, that's one thing. If I'm going uphill, my oxygen starts to become a debt. There's a debt. We call that oxygen debt. And it's a little harder because now i got to use more muscle to get up the hill. If I pick up the speed and I start sprinting or doing interval training, I'm using more muscle, more explosive muscle, heart rate's going to go up, right? So the more muscle you use, the more you are going to strain the cardiac system, which is a good thing. So when we developed uh, our system of training back before CrossFit even existed, because people would say, are you CrossFit? I'd be like, I have no idea what that was. But at that point, I was doing this three, four years already, was training head to toe with the weights. So you get this cardiovascular effect with your strength training, very efficient way to train. Now, as far as the weight loss, it's weight loss is about what's going on outside of the gym. When I say fat loss or weight loss, and the hormonal implications, right? So it's about the hormones. When you train in that fashion and you get an oxygen debt, so without oxygen, it's called anaerobic. With oxygen, it's called aerobic. So you want to have some type of anaerobic training if weight loss or fat loss is your goal. And what happens is you get this, it's called EPOC, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, which could last for 48 hours after the fact, which is going to change your hormonal profile, and it is also um, uh, going to lead to so, some good things with your metabolic uh, machinery in your body. Now, you're, you're going to get this benefit for 24 to 48 hours. If you're playing the calorie equation game, you get off that treadmill, whatever you did is it. There's nothing happening after the fact. With exercise, you only, always want to be concerned with what is happening after the fact. Right? That's where the true magic happens. Now, when you get this hormonal benefit and you get this excess post-exercise oxygen consumption or debt, you also want to keep insulin levels low. This is where fasting comes in, right? You want it, 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 as soon as insulin is raised, forget it. Everything is out the window. Insulin's raised, you cannot lose weight. You cannot lose fat. So when you're training, you want to train for PHA, peripheral heart action. Peripheral heart action. Head to toe. Train upper body, lower body, upper body. Do a push, do a squat, do a push, do a squat, do a pull, do a deadlift. You know, you can keep this real simple, but that is the way to train. Now, if you want to, like I started running last year, and I'm not doing it to lose weight. I have no misconception. That's why I'm saying you got to know why you're doing something and how it's working. I'm doing it for mental reasons. I wanted to push myself mentally in a different uh, category of fitness, right? I wanted to see if I could potentially do some super long distance races. And I know why I'm doing it. I know why I'm doing it. But what I wanted to present to you today was do not fall into the trap of slow long distance cardio and cutting your calories a lot. You're going to be a weaker, probably fatter version of yourself, which is not something that is desirable. You want to have muscle. You want to drive the cardiovascular system. You want to keep insulin low as often as possible. Stay insulin sensitive. And then you go from there. So that is the way it works. People that are still pushing this slow, long distance cardio to lose weight, I have no idea what you're talking about. Many of them are fake fitness experts. They're all over the place, they're rampant. And that's why I, I kind of refused ever to call myself a personal trainer because I did not want to be lumped with them. And I, and I believe fitness training and personal training, it, it, it's a, it can be a very, uh, it can be an art. Right? And you can really get deep into it. And there are some great, great coaches that I've learned from that are out there. We have some great, great coaches and new strength, but that's not the norm. Anyhow, 
uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully you can share that knowledge with somebody because most people, right, when they want to get in shape, well, I'm going to start going and doing this. Now, indirectly, it can help because it's going to drive it's going to drive other habits. Exercise and nutrition slash behaviors outside of the gym are like two wheels and a bike. You need both wheels to go forward. One without the other is kind of useless in some some degree. I mean, it's, it's, it's better than doing nothing. But again, exercise is more for your brain, right? There's certain hormones that can only cross the blood-brain barrier through physical movement. That is a survival mechanism, right? To drive you to go out, pursue food, and to gather food, and to hunt. So you have that aspect. Exercise is also very good for the joints and for putting on muscle. But as far as weight loss, indirectly, it, uh, it can help. Like if you're going out for walks, walking is great, a nice peaceful walk, because it's one of the only forms of exercise that are lower stress hormones. So stress, sleep, what's going on with your insulin, this is all what's really driving fat loss. So that is in a nutshell, one of the fakest fitness fallacies ever told is the idea that you need to do slow, long distance cardio to lose weight. Maybe that's your starting point. That's fine, you build up from there, but know why you're doing something, like what's your reason for doing it and how it's working. All right, make sure you hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button. Panda number nine starts on Monday. If you wanna jump in, I have a few spots left. There's gonna be two new lessons in this one. And uh, it's probably the last Panda number one I'm gonna do until the spring. God willing, and to do Panda Level 2, which will start uh, taking place in early 2022, you need to do Panda 1, so just keep that in mind. I will not take anybody into that that has not done Panda 1 because it's a foundational thing that we need, uh, and if you're an alumni, um, I'm doing an alumni rate for you for this go-around. We've had people do it three times already, so it's pretty cool. Uh, you all have a great day. You wrote for today's episode. I appreciate you and your time, truly. I'm humbled and honored if you made it to the end of this episode. Don't forget, you can go to kylenewell.com for your free ebook written by yours truly on getting started with fasting, infused with five mind map principles never before seen. This is something I have not given out to anybody else that will help you see the light when it comes to your fasting journey and creating better health, both physically and internally. Remember, it's all about the mind, body, and spirit. Until next week, peace.